welcome to Let's Talk Thursdays with Mama Rose. Hello everybody, how are you all today? <sighs> well, Mama Rose is doing wonderful. <sighs> I'm a bit mint, I'm gonna be honest. I got a lot of anxiety. <sighs> but I'll talk about that later. So first of all, as always, Got to get these housekeeping things out of the way. Um, so this is Mama Rhodes, for those that do not know. Shannon Rhodes, they call me Mama Rhodes. Uh, with Let's Talk Thursdays. And our subject for today is, Are you teeter-tottering on the brink of insanity? Now, now, mind you, you ain't gonna be able to touch all that in one, one, one session. So keep that in mind. But let me get some of these housekeeping things out the way. So who is Mama Rhodes? She is a no-nonsense, truth serum type person that's just gonna tell you like it is. I've always believed truth hurts, but how do we help? If not with the truth, the truth gonna hurt. That's how we grow. We get uncomfortable, then we grow. And um, I'm one of those coaches, just going to push you right on in where you need to go. Um, so follow me on Facebook. I'm also on Instagram under Combo with Mama Rose. And recently, all these episodes here with Let's Talk Thursdays is also on YouTube under Combo with Mama Rhodes. <laughs> oh, and for those of you who would just like to do some more talking one-on-one, -on -one, I do offer my services. And you can make an appointment at www.combowithmamarhodes.com. Easy, right? Everything Combo with Mama Rhodes. So, if you can, if you like... Just go ahead and share it on your Facebook page or tell your friends about me. Because they might get something out of this message. I know I did. So as we get a few more people online, let me see. Hi, Alexis. Hi, Alexandria. Hi, Jamie. Thank y'all for joining. Um, so happy to have y'all here. Uh, so before we dig off in the top like I stated earlier, I'm going to um, just share some little things with y'all that's happened with Mama Rose this week. <sighs> y'all, the time has come. The next time that you see me, it will be, um, I'll be a GG. Yes, a GG. So, baby Amaya is expected here on Monday. So, prayers, everybody. Uh, and prayers for Mama Rhodes. Because I got to get on a plane. And I don't know anybody who's really been on a plane during the pandemic. I know a few flight attendants might reach out to them for some advice. But uh, let's just say, I know people got their making this mask thing political, but I ain't got time for that. Mama Rose worried about her health. And I don't like to be sick, especially when I'm finna see my baby Amaya. So I got a mask. Mm -hmm. I got a shield. Mm -hmm. uh, I got some gloves. And I'm gonna have a hat on with my glasses. That's my goggles under the shield. That's how protected Mama Rose gonna be on this plane. And uh, I think it's about four hours that I'll be in there. So I'm going to keep my anxiety down. So our Mama Rose is asking for much, much prayers on that. So, but I know I'm going to make it through. Just got to get over this because sometimes oh, those negative thoughts sit, set in and you worrying about nothing because the good Lord got you. Oh, so we're going to cover baby Amaya's arrival. Um, which also leads into my husband's birthday, y'all. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he turned it half a century. 
or I like to call it. He's turning half a century. So uh, he's experiencing the things that I experienced falling apart. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, y'all done figured it out. Mama Rose robbed the cradle a little bit. My husband is younger than me. But uh, mature in mind, and age is just a number, you know. He's very mature in his mind. Just a young body on the outside. God just kept him away from me for two more years because uh, he knew that I needed somebody like him in my life. So we're going to just wish him a happy birthday. Um, so for those who have not been following me, uh, and if you're catching this on the replay, go ahead and type in replay. Uh, let me know that you've been here or that you were watching or you enjoyed yourself. So just give us some uh, things that we talked about last week. Uh, for the last three weeks, we spoke about wound care. Now, for those, my father-in-law has been in wound care. And uh, that's a whole nother subject on our veterans. Um, my father-in-law is a Vietnam veteran and how he has been treated uh, to treat his wound is a whole nother life that we'll go and talk about um, how we should be treating our veterans a lot better than what we're doing. Um, but anyway, I digress. So we spoke about wound care. In wound care, you have to let things heal. So three things we talked about was peeling back the Band-Aid, Number two, exposing the wound. And number three was healing. And I gave you eight tips on how you will heal from that. So um, if you like, go back and search for those videos. Just type in, let's talk about Tuesdays, Thursdays. Let's talk Thursdays with Mama Rhodes. Sorry, I got confused there. That's another sign, old age. <laughs> Hey, trolling, how are you? <laughs> so, that comes to what I was here for you all tonight. Was, are you teeter-tottering on the brink of insanity? Now, I um, looked that up and it really touched me. Um, because, for those that do not know, my favorite verse is Philippians 4.13, which states, I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. Uh, that is how I got through most of my trials and tribulations um, in my life. And that's why I believe I've raised three successful daughters. Um, I have a wonderful husband that I helped rise up on the corporate ladder and as well as myself. Uh, that puts me here before you today. So when I know about suffering, uh, I know about patience and I know about surrendering. So I have to give all things through Christ to strengthen me. Uh, so how I came to this subject for you all tonight was I had this one client call me uh, to schedule and to talk. And um, the client... Um, was wondering that they just felt stuck um, and in a place where just don't know what to do next and they were very very frustrated by this to the point where they started making or deciding to do some maybe irrational things like hmm, I'm sick of this job or uh, I'm just not gonna try anymore I'm just letting my performance suffer well, how does that benefit? Yeah, who, who's that going to benefit? It ain't benefiting the company, and it ain't going to benefit yourself. Number two, uh, well, I just quit. Without having another job lined up in this economy? Hmm. I don't know if I'm following that one either. But here's that third choice, which I think is why you teeter-totter on the brink of insanity. You have to leap out on your faith. You know what it is. You know what it is that you need to do. Or you know what it is that is being required of you. But you lack in one thing called fear. Um, so 
before we go on that teeter-totter, made me think, what really is teeter-totter? So I looked it up, because that's what we do. Want to know something? Go look it up. So the definition of teeter-tottering is as a verb, because as a noun, it's a seesaw. But as a verb, it's to waver between your ego and an object. So I looked at that and defined it as my ego versus what I want. Ego, want. So it's a struggle, right? Back, forth, back, forth. That leads to insanity. Because you don't know what to do. So then I had to take the next step and look up Brink of insanity. What does that really mean? Brink of insanity. So many people use it. So I said, let me look that up. I'll share with you what the dictionary said. Brink of insanity is when you are in that place where you understand that your worries and fears are irrational, but you feel them anyway. You know they're irrational, but you're going to feel it anyway. You know that your anger and paranoia are misplaced. I like you overreacted on this. But you can't help your reactions to the extent that you like. I said, get out of here. <sighs> so that's the definition of brink of insanity. You know what you're doing, but your reactions are causing you not to care. You just got to do it. It has taken over. That spirit, whatever it is, has taken over all your rationalizations because you feel it in your bones. So I'm going to say this. It's okay to feel that way. Nothing wrong with that. Please do not take this as a lecture or that you should be feeling bad. Because let me tell you, everybody, and I mean everybody, is teeter-tottering on the brink of insanity. Want to know why? I looked it up. I went to the one place that I believe it all started. Y'all want to know what, what it was? Mm-hmm. I tell you. Adam and Eve. Y'all probably looking at me like I'm crazy. Mm-hmm. For those that study the word, go look up Genesis and read one, two, three, possibly four. Right now, I only got through three. But it started with when that serpent got up in Eve's ear and convinced her to eat of the forbidden fruit from the, the tree of knowledge. That's when all this teeter-tottering on the brink of insanity started. Cause y'all wanna know why it started? With that one action? Because that's when doubt, fear, um, distrust, all those feelings of negativity ingested in her spirit and Adam's spirit from eating from that forbidden fruit. Because at first they were all happy, knew what they were supposed to do, went by their heart, not on their mind, and everything was right. But that serpent came in and started twisting things, started making her doubt things, so maybe don't see things the way she should be clearly seeing them. So after that, she ate that out, that forbidden fruit. Oh, well, that was it for us. Yeah, that's part of the flesh. That's what that is. We're speaking from the flesh, y'all. And what better way or what other way that we could stop from uh, or help us to overcome this flesh talking, this doubt, this negativity, or this overreacting, it is 
reading the word. That's what that is. I can't, I can't tell you any other way. But yeah. Gotta pick it up. And I tell you one thing you gotta start with. You can read one and two. But read Genesis chapter three. That's the way it all is started. All this distrust, all this doubt. Because the way I have it up in my head, y'all, when this happens to me, because I know it don't happen to y'all, because y'all perfect, but this is just what happened to me. Uh, when I'm getting ready to make a decision, or I'm getting ready to do a life-altering change in my life, it's something that sits over here with doubt, negativity, and just laughing and saying, you're going to fail. Yeah, you are. You're going to fail. I don't know why you're wasting your time anyway. Why are you going and talking on that live? Or why are you doing this? Or why are you getting in that car going on that trip? Oh, you know you're going to get the Rona. I don't know why you're doing all that. But then, this other voice is on the other side. Teeter, totter, saying, okay, you got this. Don't worry about that. I got your protection, girl. I got your hand. I'm going to hold you up. Sister, stick together. We're going to lift you up. We're going to lift you up in prayer. We're going to lift you up, queen. So then you have the choice, and that's where the word come in. Which one you going to listen to? Going to listen to Mr. Naysayer over here or Mrs. Naysayer, whoever you want to call her, or goodness, wholesomeness, and up uplifting. I know who I normally listen to. Don't get me wrong. I ain't perfect. I ain't. Because sometimes that one over there wins. And what that means is it has limited me in my abilities because I can't overcome the fear because I lack faith. That's what you got to have. You got to have faith to believe. Yeah, you might fall. You're going to scrape a knee or two. Yeah, you're going to do that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but our Father lifts us back up and keeps us back on that path, even when you stray off the path. You might say, ooh, that path was a little too rough. I'm going over here. I'm, I'm going to sit this one out. Oh, you can sit. But that's why my client was calling me because she over there sitting because she teeter-tottering in the brink of uh, insanity because she's sitting. She's too scared to go back on that path over there because it was a little too uncomfortable. But not realizing that she just get back on that path and go and go and go, the road gets better. The road start being paved. The road start turning into gold. And her feet and plushness. And I see all kind of stuff like, you know them cloud shoes that you be on? Won't even hurt her feet no more. She just be just floating. That's all she got to do. But you got to have faith. So when you are teeter-tottering on the brink of insanity, my best bet near three things. Pull yourself away. Unplug from everything. Facebook, Instagram, your, your job, your kids, your husband, everything. Find like a moment of peace, whether it's in your closet. You just need to be alone. If you have to go in there and just lock all the kids up in the, uh, and take them over to uh, grandma's house or whatever, just do it. Just say, I'm done. Or walk out the door, leave them with the husband or uh, your sister, your, your mama, whatever you need to do. And you pull yourself in that house. And for my empty nesters, you probably already have, you know, the house empty. So you could just start praying right there. Second, it's open up the good book. And then you start asking him to guide you. And it's going to be a little hard at first for those who don't know his voice. And then that other person over there, Mr. Naysayer, is sitting over there telling me all that negative thought. But when that happens, you just say, utter the words, stop, because I want to hear your word. Lord, what is it that you need me to do? And he may not answer you right then, but that's okay. You get in the habit, and you keep going back. And over time, 
you will have your answer because you're going to feel it. And then it's going to feel right. And nothing going to stop it because once that feeling feel good off in you, you can't stop it because you just feel good. And whatever he got for you, no man can take it from you. Not your mama, your sister, your husband, your kids, nobody. Because he got you. Now, I'm going to end that note with that. And I hope this message benefited you tonight. Because I know it benefited me telling y'all this. So, I will see y'all next week. And my subject next week, y'all, is going to be a doozy. Y'all want to know what it is? I'll let y'all on a hint. Identity theft. And not the kind you talking about or you see them commercials about. It's the kind that all of us suffer from. Your identity. Good night and love y'all the wholeness. Bye-bye.